Now, look what I got in the mail today. It's all the way from Norway. So, here's the box. Let's see what's inside here. So here's the contents of the box. There is an instruction manual, but unfortunately, there's no mounting template, but there is one on Rotofellow's website. So we'll go print one of those off, cut it out. Now I've printed out this template from a PDF file. One of the things you want to be certain of is that you print it to actual size. Don't let the printer do any scaling, but just to double check to make sure that the sizing is correct, take the binding and line it up and make sure all the holes are centered. So if all the holes get centered properly, then you know that the uh, template is printed out to the correct size. Now I'm mounting mine on a set, brand new set of S-Bound 98s. And according to the instructions, they uh, want to find the balance point on the ski. This is the traditional way of mounting a set of cross-country bindings on a cross-country ski. So finding the balance point is pretty easy. You just need a knife edge device. What I'm going to use is essentially a thin bladed square and I'm just going to lay the ski on top of it and move it back and forth from tip to tail. Until I find the balance point and then I'll mark it. Now, interestingly enough, Fisher has tried to mark the balance point on these skis. Um, they're a little bit uh, different from where I find the balance point, and even the balance point between the two different skis are a little bit different. So this is the balance point on one ski, and this is the balance point on the other ski. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split the difference between the two of them. And there's my line for my balance point. The next step is probably the most important, and that is to define a center line on the ski. And for that, I'm gonna use a masking tape. I'll just put this forward of the balance line and run it quite a ways back. So here I'm just transferring the balance point on the ski. And up next is to define the center line on the ski. This is probably the most important thing. One of the things you don't want to do is you just don't want to try to measure across the top sheet. And the reason that you don't want to do that is because all the skis have a curved top sheet and it's really hard to find a defined center point. So what you really want to do is you want to measure from the outside of the steel edges and define the center point and transfer that to the top. There's a couple different ways that people do that. One method that I've seen people use is, is what's called the double square method. And you have to have two uh, squares. What we're trying to do here is just project the edges of the square up. And then what you need to do is you need to measure the distance between these two and divide it by two and mark the center line. That works pretty well. What I like to use is a center ruler. And uh, this is a paper ruler that I printed out. It's a PDF file. You can find them online. I'll put a link down below. And it's quite easy because you can actually wrap this over the edge of the ski and you can determine the center point. And the uh, way I do that is I start up here and I fold the paper edge over like this, wrap it around. Same with this, and I keep doing that until I get it equal on both sides. It's kind of hard to do with the camera, but I'm going to do it away from the camera view so I can see it a lot better. Now I find if I wrap the tape around to the edge, you can see here it's 47. I 
and it matches over here, then that's going to be the center of the ski. And we'll mark it right there. Now I've done, I've put three dots on the ski. You always want to do at least three. It makes, lets you know that you've gotten the correct measurement. If you goof up on one of the center measurements, then they're not going to line up. Three is fine, four is even better. This is looking pretty good for me. Now I'm going to So this is my center line. So we have the balance point and the center line. Now on my paper template here, I want to go ahead, I want to use an X-Acto knife. I want to cut out this little triangle here. That way I can see the uh, balance point of the center line here. It also makes it quite easy to line up the center line. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out. And now with this center cut out hole cut out here, I can move this up to the balance point. I can also see the center line. So it's critical here. We have the center line on the template here. We have the balance point. Now I'm just going to take some tape, secure this down, this end. And we're going to do the same thing at the back of the template. So now we know that the back of the template is on the center line of the ski. We have the pin line on the balance point, And then the center line is here as well. Last but not least, I'd like to go ahead and take the binding and lay it on top of the template just to make sure that the template is the proper size. There hasn't been any errors made when we printed it out. And so all these holes line up perfectly. The next step is to transfer the screw hole locations from the template to the ski. I use a pointed awl and a hammer to do this. A good whack punches the starter hole that makes it easy to locate the center with a drill bit. Now we can remove the masking tape and move on to the next step. Now, before I do any real damage, by drilling some holes in the ski. I'm going to line these up over the divots that I just knocked in. And I've got my boot. I want to see how that heel plate matches up. That looks pretty good. Now one of the things I was curious about, it looks like all the screws are the same length here. It's always a good idea anytime you mount up a set of skis, to take your longest screw put it through the binding, and then go ahead and check the depth, just to double check to make sure that the screw is not going to extend down below. I also have a special drill bit that's designed for mounting bindings. And this drill bit is a 3.6 by 9 millimeter, and it has the tapered slope on it. I'm just going to lay it up against the back of this, and the depth looks just about perfect there. So this is what we're going to use. Now you can get by with just using conventional drill bits. You can mark the depth off using some tape just to make sure that you're not going to drill through your ski. You're going to want to use the uh, drill bit size and depth recommendations that's based from the uh, binding manufacturer. Do your best to keep the drill bit perpendicular. And I look down both directions. And I just go ahead and I'll get it started. Pretty easy when those dimples are on there. Now normally after you drill, you'll get a little dimple that forms and it's a good idea to smooth that out. What I like to do is I just take an X-Acto knife. I just kind of run it around the edge here. Smooths that right out, gets rid of that dimple. Now when you're screwing your binding into your ski, 
you should always use glue. And the uh, reason you want to use glue is it provides a good seal and uh, you just don't want any water to be able to get into these holes. The cores of this particular ski is wood and if you if water finds its ways into these wood core it'll eventually rot, it'll eventually break. And uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversies, a lot of opinions on what to use. Some people use epoxy, binds them in pretty well. I like to use just a waterproof glue. This happens to be Tight Bond 3. So all I do is take a, little, a toothpick and I'll go ahead and coat some inside the holes. Now for these Explorer bindings, these happen to be a, a Torx, a T25. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to start one up here in a corner. I don't want to go all the way down with it. I'm just starting these. I'm not torquing them all the way down yet. I know a lot of people use an electric drill to drive these in. Uh, I just as soon use a good screwdriver. That way you less likely to over torque them and strip them. And then I'll go ahead and tight each one a little ways. Kind of do a cross pattern. How tight do you tighten them? Well, I don't know, it just comes from experience. Mounting the heel plate is just like mounting the front toe piece. You just have to add the heel wire. The location of the heel piece is going to depend upon how long your boots are. And the paper template showed the recommended screw locations for the different size shoes. All that's left to do now is just check the function of the heel wire and add in these covers that cover up the screws. So let's see where we are in the old weight department. These are my old 98s, 1454 grams, ski and binding. Total weight, 24.15. This is the 2021, 22, 98s. These are coming in at 12.54 grams. And with the new Alpha Free boots, we've got 21.13 grams. So the weight difference is 302 grams, and that's 10.6 ounces per foot, which is a significant savings. Well, that's it for this week's video. I can't wait to get out on the slopes and have a direct comparison between these two different systems. So until next time, be safe and be kind, and I hope to see you out on the trail.